and welcome to our flip video lesson, Thinking About Egypt, Lesson 4.05. Oops, sorry, I went one too fast there. Lesson 4.05 details. There are no reading pages for today's lesson. Your student guide workbook page is 116 to 121. Your OMS assignment is just your OMS lesson, and then about the topic, comparing ancient Egypt with ancient Mesopotamia. So we've gone through a lot of reading objectives or learning objectives already for this unit four. Two for today are analyze Egyptian art and architecture for information on the society's culture and compare and contrast Egypt's culture and civilization to those of Mesopotamia. Lesson introduction, thinking about Egypt. You have studied the art and architecture of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia to learn more about those cultures. Historians study art and architecture to understand a society's values and priorities, but artifacts give clues about other aspects of culture as well. They can tell us, for example, how monuments were constructed, who did the work, and what skills they had, and what, a natural, resor and what natural resources were available in a region. Egypt Geography Egypt is almost all desert, dry, brown, red land. The annual flooding of the Nile deposits fertile soil. Egyptians grew wheat to make bread and barley to make beer. Other crops included onions, beans, lentils, dates, figs, grapes, pomegranates, and flax. They also grew papyrus along the riverbanks and used it to make paper. Egypt economy. The Egyptians produced a surplus of food, which they traded for goods they did not have in Egypt. Items they imported included juniper, cedar, silver, horses, lapis lazuli, ebony, copper, cattle, gold, ivory, incense, and ostrich feathers. Surplus grain, stone for building, copper for tools, semi-precious stones for jewelry, all moved up and down the Nile. Egypt religion and philosophy. Philosophy. The Egyptians worshiped many nature gods and goddesses. They prayed to them for good fortune and protection. The Egyptians believed that each of their kings was the god of Horus come to rule on earth. They also believed that death was not the end of everything, but the beginning of eternal life. They built pyramids as tombs for kings, queens, and other royalty as homes for the next life. They believed that people would use their body and all the things that were buried with them in the afterlife. They decorated tombs with scenes of everyday life and statues of servants because they believed that if priests said the right prayers, and artworks would come to life and forever supply the dead person with all his or her needs. Egypt, knowledge and arts. This is a long one. The Egyptians were the first people to build with stone. They raised monumental pyramids and temples that still stand along the Nile. They built the pyramids as tombs for early pharaohs. The Great Sphinx, carved out of limestone, is one of the largest sculptures ever created. Egyptian art and architecture had a purpose. Temples honored royal families and the gods and were, were uh, sorry, honored royal families and the gods and were decorated with paintings and statues to make certain that those who died would have a pleasant afterlife. The Egyptians made necklaces, bracelets, collars, and earrings from gold, silver, glass, and stones. The Egyptians invented a form of picture writing called hieroglyphs, whose picture symbols stood for ideas and later sounds. Hieroglyphs were carved mostly on, a temple, on temple walls, tombs, and monuments. Egyptian scribes used a shorthand form of hieroglyphics to keep all kinds of official records for the pharaoh, from reports about harvest to construction plans for temples. The Egyptians invented a paper-like writing material called papyrus. The key to understanding hieroglyphics was lost over the years until the discovery of the Rosetta Stone, which became a key to, um, for modern scholars to interpret the writing system. Very few ancient Egyptians could read or write. Only the brightest children were allowed to attend school. They would, uh, they would, they would, could, <laughs> they would, could, that's a typo. They could become scribes or obtain good jobs in the government. Priests were some of the best scribes. They were sent to the house of life, a kind of college for priests. I'm going to go ahead and change that really quickly there. Should be they could. All right, there we go. Egypt, technology. The Egyptians invented the embalming process and one of the first irrigation systems. They based their calendar on a 365-day year. The Egyptians used mathematics to build pyramids, canals, and reservoirs. Their doctors were skilled enough to perform brain surgery. Certainly not like we have today, but definitely skilled. Egypt, government and law. 
The Pharaoh was the supreme ruler of ancient Egypt. Most of the rulers of ancient Egypt were men, but they, there were four female pharaohs. The Pharaoh governed for life and made sure that the divine order existed throughout the kingdom. Many pharaohs led the armies in battle. Prime ministers were called viziers. They were responsible for collecting taxes, overseeing the priesthood, presiding in the courts, and carrying out other administrative duties. They appointed hundreds of other officials. Government officials also served for life. Egypt Society The social structure in ancient Egypt was like a pyramid. At the top was the king or pharaoh, the priests who served in the temples, and the scribes. Educated Egyptians who kept the accounts of the country's finances were next in line. The craftsmen who built temples, decorated tombs, and carved statues of the gods were next. And the majority of the people, most of whom made a living at farming, were at the bottom of the social pyramid. Women had legal rights. They could own property and work outside of the home. Egypt history. The three most important people or periods in the history of ancient Egypt were the Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. Before the Old King Kingdom, Egypt was divided into two kingdoms, Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north. Narmer, the king of Upper Egypt, conquered Lower Egypt and united the two kingdoms, establishing the first dynasty. The Old Kingdom had a strong central government. During this period, Khufu's Great Pyramid and other pyramids at Giza were built. During the Middle Kingdom, Egyptians greatly expanded their reach. They conquered territory to the south and traded with lands as distant as Syria. The New Kingdom is often referred to as Egypt's Golden Age, age because it was a period of great prosperity, great art, and great kings. Two important pharaohs reigned during this time, Tutankhamun and Ramses II. Also during this time, a powerful female ruler, Hatshepsut, successfully ruled Egypt, not as queen, but as king meaning she was a queen, but sometimes she posed as a male because there was sometimes a stigma around female rulers. The pharaoh Akhenaten abolished the worship of many gods and declared that there was only one god, Aten, a sun god. Akhenaten moved the capital out of Thebes to a new location in the desert at Akhenaten. Tutankhamun, who ruled, um, Tutankhamun, who ruled after Akhenaten's death, reestablished the traditional religion with its many gods, and he brought the capital back to Thebes. The New Kingdom came to an end around 1070 BC, when a weakened Egypt became prey to its neighbors. The kingdom suffered invasion and rule by a series of foreign dynasties. And now turn to page 118 in your student guide, um, and you are going to need to pause this video. So there's a chart here on comparing cultures. So we've got Sumer and we've got Egypt, and then we'll fill in the Indus Valley and we'll fill in China um, as we go. But definitely take time to fill in this chart. It will help you as you're organizing your thoughts once we finish, um, once we finish uh, this semester. Okay, so there, here is the first part. And again, go ahead and pause this video and you can fill it in. And then here is the second part. You can pause the video and you can fill it in. This is basically just kind of a quick overview of, um, of a review. And then here is the third part just not long enough to fit on one page in your flip video. So again, pause these, these screens, these slides, and go ahead and fill it in for yourself. And then here we come to our reading pages, which there are none for today. So you have plenty of time to fill in that chart and go ahead and look that over. Some important vocabulary words to understand. Surplus is more than what is needed or used. Excess, inhabited, a person settling in or occupying a place or environment. Analyze means to examine methodically and in detail, and then culture, the custom arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. And then here we come to our quote section. The scholar seeks, the artist finds. Thank you so much for joining me today. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Have a great day.